Oh, sorry. Just looked at the temperature gauge of my barbecue. Uh, waiting for my ribs to be finished and I want to, don't want to burn them 105 degree. Works well. By the way, ribs are digital food. Eh? You eat a rib or you don't eat a rib, but you don't eat a half one. <laughs> Hello and welcome to our next video about analog digital converter. Today we're talking about a ramp compare version. Okay, ramp compare version. How is this working? Yeah. How is this working? Uh, well, I will simply I will simply draw. Okay, here. Oh, well, it's thick. We have a comparator. A comparator is comparing two voltage voltages to each other. Okay, and it tells if one voltage is bigger than the others. It has a plus and a minus input, and it's comparing. Okay, I need even two comparators. Comparators. So this is already a digital output here. Okay. Here I compare with zero volt, so with ground. And here I compare with my analog value I want to measure. Okay. Here is my input value yeah, or my analog value. UI input value. So this is my comparator one. This is my comparator two. Right. To what I'm comparing, I have here a generator. Right. This generator is producing a sawtooth signal. Right. So generator. It's coming out here. Hmm. Then I need here a logic element. Then I have an end. And then this end is using this counter thing, okay? From last time. I hope you remember. Yeah? So here is my here is my impulse generator. Okay. This impulse generator and this end here together yeah they will feed the counter the end is the switch okay so they will feed the counter there is the counter then there is the memory of course and there is the display And anything in between. Memory counter. This needs to be just an upwards counter. And here we have the display. So this. Where is my pen? Where is my pen? I use this one. This is giving the counter value. Yeah. And here I have my digital out. Here there is also a 
becoming something to this sawtooth generator. Now, this is the working principle, yeah? how it looks like, and now I tell you why. Yeah? What's a sawtooth voltage? Yeah? Let's have a look. Our sawtooth voltage. How does it look like? In our case, this is the time, yeah? and this is the voltage. In our case, it will start somewhere. Yeah? Just this one. It will start somewhere in the negative value and then ramp up at a maximum value. It will immediately drop to this minimum value. Yeah? So there's a negative value and there's a maximum value. And that's it. And the sawtooth will always ramp up, drop fast. Slower ramp up, drop fast. Slower ramp up, drop fast. Slower ramp up, and so on. Okay? This is what this generator brings. So, starting at this point in time, here, This comparator is now one. Okay? This is one and this is still zero. Yeah? Because if I have here this UI and let's say this UI is changing somewhat like this. Yeah? Here this is one, this is zero. So they are not equal, not equal. Yeah? So one and the counter is counting. Yeah? And here, at this point in time, the comparator 1 is also switching to 1. They are not equal anymore. They are not different anymore. They are equal, so the output here will be 0. And this AND will not bring the impulses to the counter. The counter value is finished. Yeah? So the counter value was now counted for this period of time, yeah? T1. Yeah? Let's use this. Yeah? Here we start counting, here we stop counting, here we only have a shorter period of time, T2, until the And if it's a longer period of time, the counter will count to higher values. If it's a shorter period of time, the counter will count, not count to that high values. This is how this is working. Yeah? So suddenly the counter value is reflecting how big the input voltage was. Okay? This is UI yeah? and this here, this is U, I call it US, yeah? sawtooth. Now, why does this sawtooth generator need the impulses? Well, you can build a sawtooth generator just with an oscillator also. It's working on its own. It's possible. Yeah? But then you would run into a troubles maybe because usually these oscillators are, are uh, temperature depending. Yeah? If the temperature is changing, the frequency is changing. And if the frequency is changing, the time from here to here is changing. And if the time is changing, the output is changing. So you would reproduce a temperature drift. Okay? This is usually not what you want. You want that this thing is working at minus 5 degrees Celsius. You want that this thing is working at plus 30 degrees Celsius and beyond those values, of course. Yeah? You do not want to compensate. So how this uh, sort of generator is looking inside? Yeah? Usually, yeah? so if this is my sort of generator, yeah?
usually inside there there is also a counter there's also a counter And there is a digital to analog converter. Which color do I do? This one. I've not used this one. It's good. So there is a DA digital to analog converter. Okay. So here we have got the impulses coming to the counter, the counter is counting up and the counter value is transferred yeah, because there are now several bits yeah, to the analog digital converter and here the output here this is then our US okay. suddenly even if this frequency is changing with uh, temperature I'm changing this frequency here and here and they fit together. Yeah. Good, right? So this ramp here is not really a ramp. If we would zoom in, yeah, depending on the resolution of this thing and of the counter, of course, we will see that the US is, is, is growing in steps, of course. Yeah. I said we cannot get rid of these steps at converting to analog yeah, we will not reach a smooth but this does not really matter you know at least there is no uncertainty at the comparators yeah. so that's it this is how this is working and i said so Ramp comparison. The name is pretty good. Yeah? In, in, in German it, it means a Sägezahnverfahren. Yeah? Sawtooth. Well, you see, it's a pr simple, pretty forward approach. The disadvantage is that you would have to have to wait always until the ramp is going down. Regardless on how big or small the input voltage is, there is a certain value of, of uh, conversion time. If it's a small value, the conversion time is the same. If it's a big value, the conversion time is the same. So at least it's predictable. Uh, but, you know, must be better. There could be something more. Yeah? Why do I have to wait until the ramp is going up to the maximum value if I already knew know the, the, the answer. Yeah. So one possibility, next video, next possibility. Okay? For this time, thank you very much for listening and goodbye.